Salam keluarga Malaysia. Hello and good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mohan Priya and you're watching Updates at Noon. Making the headlines today. Government not scrapping subsidies. The government is not pulling the plug on the subsidies provided to the people, but it is increasing the subsidy value to help ease the burden of those affected by the current rising prices of goods. Communications and Multimedia Minister Tanzri Anwar Musa said the government is always concerned over the cost of living issues plaguing the people, resulting in the channeling of 43 billion ringgit worth of subsidies to the people for various things. I nak menafikan sekeras-kerasnya bahawasanya ada keputusan malah tak pernah ada pun keputusan tentang 31 Julai menarik segala subsidi seperti yang didakwa oleh wali. Ini adalah satu fitnah yang sangat besar dan sama sekali tidak benar dengan apa yang kerajaan putuskan ya. Jemaah menteri telah buat keputusan dan juga atas apa tu uh, kehendak yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri sendiri yang sangat prihatin tentang masalah tekanan eh, apa ni hit apa ni kos sara hidup ini kerajaan mengekalkan dasar mengekalkan semua bentuk subsidi Tan Sri Anwar was commenting on a video posted on the TikTok application which claimed that the government would withdraw all subsidies on 31st July, which led to panic buying among the people. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob announced that the government would maintain the subsidy of 4 billion ringgit for cooking oil in 1 kilogram packets allocated for this year. The subsidy, which began in 2007, was provided by the government only for that 1 kilogram cooking oil packed in poly bags, priced at 2 ringgit 50 cent each compared to the real market price of 9 ringgit each for the consumption of Kluarga Malaysia from the B40 group. All traders and companies are reminded not to be involved in illegal activities such as hiding controlled goods in order to gain more profits. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nantalingi said the ministry has implemented Ops Anti Soro to curb the hiding of controlled items following the government's announcement to float the prices of certain goods such as chicken, chicken eggs and bottled cooking oil effective 1st July. According to the minister, the operation was also to ensure that industry players and traders of controlled goods were always aware of their responsibilities in ensuring adequate supply in the market. Lawatan begini kami akan teruskan. Ini secara berujuk lah datang di sini. Penguasa akan turun padang untuk kita memantau lebih-lebih lagi kita ini menjelang Hari bulan tarik di mana untuk ayam akan tamat tarik kualan harga dia. He said from January to 22nd June this year, a total of 158,064 inspections were carried out covering selected retailers, selected wholesalers and selected manufacturers and the supply of controlled items was sufficient for the needs of consumers. The Ministry of Health aims to establish one-stop centres for sleep-related issues in 40 hospitals nationwide within the next five years. Its Minister Kairi Jamaluddin said so far such centres are only available at the Putrajaya Hospital, Serdang Hospital, Kuala Lumpur Hospital and Sultana Bahia Hospital with each having a level one sleep lab. Elaborating further, Kyrie said the one-stop centres would enable multidisciplinary treatment because obstructive sleep apnea (OSA) is closely linked to various other comorbidities. Kita akan mulakan uh, perkhidmatan makmal tidur ataupun uh, sleep lab di hospital rembau. Uh, ini tujuannya adalah untuk um, kita buat uh, diagnosis kepada mereka yang menghidapi sleep apnea. Uh, satu penyakit uh, gangguan tidur yang boleh uh, menjadi penyakit-penyakit uh, komplikasi penyakit kronik yang lain. 
Kyrie explained that sleep apnea, which is a condition where a person stops breathing during sleep, is found to be getting worse with about 15 to 30 percent of people in Malaysia suffering from the problem. He said the ministry is hoping to build the one-stop centres at 13 hospitals with level 1 sleep lab facilities and 27 specialist hospitals with level 3 and 4 sleep study labs, which will cost 1.5 million ringgit. The Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, has issued commission directive to three telecommunication companies for failing to meet broadband service standards and improve service quality in several areas in Langkawi. The companies were Salcom Aksiata Brahad, Digi Telecommunications Sindram Brahad and U-Mobile Sindram Brahad. MCMC in a statement today said the Commission Directive, registered on 19th May 2022, required the three companies to make improvements to ensure that the quality of service and user experience are at a good level and comply with the mandatory standards for quality of service, MSQOS. Failure to comply with the, with the Commission Directive on these quality standards may result in the telcos being subject to penalties of up to 200,000 ringgit under Section 109 of the Communication and Multimedia Act. MCMC said it had conducted technical audits on broadband services under MSQOS at 3,038 locations nationwide that were selected based on the location records of complaints received by the Commission. Of the total, it said 40 mandatory compliance notices involving 449 earliest failed locations were issued from 1st January to 15th June. The guidelines for a landslide risk assessment and risk index and critical public infrastructure in Malaysia will be adopted as a guide for the government and developers to plan local development more effectively. The guidelines were approved at the 79th National Council for Local Government Meeting, chaired by Senior Works Minister Dato Sri Fadila Yusof, which was also attended by Housing and Local Government Minister Dato Sri Rizal Merikan, Nine American. The Ministry of Housing and Local Government in a statement said that the guidelines developed by the Works Ministry were aimed at reducing the risk of landslides in critical public infrastructure areas, such as roads, dams, telecommunication and public buildings. It said the guidelines are additional documents related to the Risk Map Index that needs to be read together with the other slope management documents that are already in use at the federal, state or local government levels. The ministry said that the meeting also took note of the successful implementation of the Agile Regulation Initiative, which is the express issuance of construction permits to boost state productivity, as implemented in Kedah through cooperation with Kulim Municipal Council and Malaysia Productivity Corporation. The meeting also took note of the Solid Waste Management Transformation Plan moving towards a cyclical economy to ensure a more sustainable solid waste management throughout the country. Construction work on the East Coast Rail Link ECRL project has recorded overall progress of 30% as of May this year. According to Transport Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong, the project is likely to hit the projected 37% completion rate by the end of this year. Explaining further, Dato Sri Dr. Wee said the development was driven by infrastructure work in four states, which included the alignments of Section A from Kota Baru to Dungun, Section B from Dungun to Mantakap, and Section C from Mantakap to Port Klang. He said the infrastructure work is running simultaneously in Sections A, B, and C, and in more than 300 work areas along the 665 kilometer railway line. He noted that the number of work areas will continue to increase towards the peak of construction in 2023, where a manpower of 23,000 will be needed to develop the ECRL project more effectively. Dato Sri Dr. Wee also said various vacancies in management and non-management fields would be filled, besides assuring that local manpower requirements would increase to 70% of the quota by next year, in line with the progress of the project. 
the deep sea fishing sector needs to be boosted as it has the potential of providing a lucrative income for the industry players. Thus, Agriculture and Food Industries Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ronald Kiandi said the ministry would seek views and suggestions from the industry towards bringing change and making deep sea fishing a more conducive industry in the future. The minister said boosting the sector can help to increase the source of food in the country. Bila kita bercakap tentang uh, laut dalam, tentu uh, kita kita juga harus uh, melakukan uh, perkara dan tindakan yang sama, mendengar uh, cadangan uh, cabaran yang dihadapi oleh pihak industri uh, untuk mengolah satu dasar yang kondusif bagi uh, pertumbuhan dan uh, pembangunan sektor he said the government would also reconsider the calls for the government to give a fuel subsidy to C2 class fishing boats that was discontinued in 2019. Malaysia Airports Holdings Berhad's MEHB's traffic performance for its total network of airports has gained attraction in May 2022, recording the highest passenger movements to date, surpassing the 7 million mark for the first time in two years. Now, the airport operator said both international and domestic passenger movements equally recorded the highest traffic for this year. MAHB said international passenger movements in Malaysia were encouraging, reaching 1 million volume in May in just over a month after the reopening of borders. As for domestic passenger movement, the airport's manager noted that it was equally encouraging, hitting over 3 million passengers or 91% of the pre-COVID levels. The growth was fueled by Idil Fitri celebrations in the early weeks of May and Sabah and Sarawak's Harvest Festival season celebrations towards the end of the month. Overall, the company recorded 7.1 million passenger movements for its local airports and Istanbul Sabiha Gokchen International Airport in May. Coming up in our foreign segment, Supreme Court ruling expands United States gun right. Why do we tell you stories? Relevant. New. Efficient. Accurate. Reliable. We bring you extraordinary stories from around the world, from politicians, bankers, and even your favorite celebrities. This and many more on RTM's English News. National women's squash players S. Sivasankari and Rachel Arnold are the country's hopes of bringing home the gold at the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, scheduled to be held from 28th July to the 8th August. The success of the two players in winning bronze medals at the Women's Doubles World Championships in Glasgow, Scotland last April can help them achieve glorious success in Birmingham. Recently in the Elguna, after the World Championships, in Elguna, Sangari reached the quarterfinals. She narrowly missed out of the quarterfinals in the World Championships. Um, so they had a good outing and that was preparation. And right now is to just come back, sharpen mental, and make sure that physically they're all in top shape. Met during his visit and meeting with the squash camp at the Bukit Jalil National Squash Centre, Montero said all of the players are ready to gear up and train hard, adding that the target is one gold medal, hopefully from the women's doubles or even the mixed doubles. Montero also observed the national gymnastics team making final preparations ahead of the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Malaysian Gymnastics Federation MGF Honorary Secretary Afrita Ariani Nasril said the artistic gymnastics team planned to attend a camp in Japan before heading for Birmingham. It's a last minute plan but then if we dapat untuk pergi camp ni memang satu penderahan yang baguslah before ke Sukan Commonwealth. Kenapa Jepun? 
kenapa Jepun? Uh, because for now, with the short notice and all, Jepun is the best uh, place to, to get the last preparation. And that concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story today, government not scrapping subsidies. Don't forget to tune in to News at 10, coming up at 10 p.m. on RTM's news channel. Now we leave you with a shot of an exhibition on crimes against the media held in Taras Shevchenko Park in Kiev called The War is Not Over Yet. It displays photos and testimonies of journalists who are victims of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Till then, I'm Mona Priya. Thanks for tuning in.